Hello, Emma. Hello, Sam. How are you? I am well. What you look like? What you like? You was there some joke that was going on? No, I'm just that? I'm I'm happy to be here. Was that okay? That's weird. I think we're all energized by the uh, by conflict. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, I certain get... someone here certainly is. You definitely. I think yeah, you I get do. energy off yeah, of it. I do. I actually do. It's I true. get anxiety, but when it's other people involved in conflict, I'm very much in in in. in and also, it's contagious. When you get into a conflict, now it like gives me more confidence to get into more conflicts. So I, I get when I see other people involved in conflict, I just get a little bit jealous. That's about that's it. FOMO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little. What am I? Wait. Um, that's that's not 100 percent true. I don't. I, I I'm not inviting any of this. But um, in the fun half, we will save it for the fun half. We'll get some other sort of more relevant news. Uh, but I, I got a, uh, a DM for the first time in a couple of years from uh, somebody who I used to count as a uh, well, pretty good friend, uh, uh, Matt Taibbi, asking me about a tweet that I had done when it was announced that uh, Glenn Greenwald would be doing a Q&A with uh, Alex Jones. <clears throat> as a way of promoting uh, a documentary about Alex Jones. Mm. And uh, I think my tweet was just, you know, more like, and uh, something like, and that's a wrap. Like, like as if Glenn Greenwald had come to the really, the sort of the end of, a, of an era uh, and we were really all done. And, and after watching the Q and A, you were right. And, 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 and to be fair, I prejudge the Q&A because I do think that, yes, like, I understand it's one thing to interview people. It's another thing to interview them on your show. Yeah. But I've worked in film. I know how this works at a film festival. You don't do that Q&A afterwards because we're going to do a hard-hitting piece <laughs> of journalism. You do it because it's promotional. That's why it's out there. On, and they were going to put it on Rumble. It is a promotional piece. It's like Comic Con, but, but I mean, for conspir right, right. conspiracy. Alex was like theory. thanking him at the end for doing it. Like, oh, thank well, you so oh, much. I really appreciate it. I'm this sure he thanked him beforehand, too. But, but I did not realize how naked it would be. I honestly thought that at least he's going to do one question, and that didn't happen. Anyways, so I thought Matt was just reaching out to me. And was actually, and then it turns out by the end, I realized like, oh, he's not responding. And he's got, he's pursuing some line of questions about the documentary asking if I had seen it. It's not released. Of course I haven't seen it. And I wasn't commenting on the documentary. People can make documentaries. I think there's probably been 10 documentaries about Alex Jones, as far as I know. I don't know. But I was talking about the Q&A. Anyways. Yeah, see, you got me. You, I, I, well, none of this was even going to talk about at all. Uh, you know how this all started is because I was smiling. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, Lesson learned. Yeah. And it's my fault. Better, do better next time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyways, we'll talk about this. In the, in, and the thing is, I, I mean, I was, I, 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 well, we'll talk about it later. Because, um, you know, I'm very curious as to how Matt will characterize that. I, if he's smart, he'll leave me out of the piece because it doesn't, uh, nothing that I did purported to promote at least the theme he seemed to be going for, which of course is liberal elites don't understand Alex Jones. I got news for you. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to Alex Jones uh, before I think, I don't even think Matt Taibbi was back in the country no. when I was listening to, to Alex Jones. And yes, I have friends. I've talked to people listening to Alex Jones. I don't talk to them as much anymore because Alex Jones got them into David Icke's and now they're convinced that I'm part lizard because I'm a Jew. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's why, to the extent that I don't talk, but, and I've listened to more Art Bell and I've listened to more George Nury and all of it, all of it, than any of these people combined. Coast to coast AM. Exactly. Anybody wants to go and talk to me about a radio host? I'm misjudging Alex Jones. It's true. He was skeptical about the NSA. And he also thinks there's a weather machine. You know what that is? Honestly, and I've said this a decade ago, I said this. More. If Alex Jones didn't exist, the CIA would have to create him. His critique of the NSA was 
undermined by the fact that he believes there's a weather uh, uh, machine or whatever, or there's the Bilderberger group, or that there are lizards, or that they're one world. This is exactly the type of misinformation you would want. That if you were the NSA, you were the CIA, you were whatever agency, and you didn't want reasonable people to critique it, you would send Alex Jones out there to, to take legitimate critique of the CIA and combine it with People having like, you know, like controlling the world from, you know, as they do chants with owls at the Bilderberger group or whatever. The and his handsome good looks you forgot yeah. to mention. And and so, you know, the idea that you can cherry pick things that Alex Jones said that were legitimate. And this is a, a, a reason to promote this guy and make no mistake about it. Promotion, period. Yeah. That, uh, that Obama is a Muslim. And he's some type of martyr because he was booted off of YouTube. Give me an effing break. He can go back onto radio. All right. That's not what I had planned to start. Anyway, the show here's with. the news. <laughs> I said that handsome thing because that was a uh, that was an opening question to a question in that Q and A. I, I just like you are so handsome. You know Alex. what happened was that yeah, I know it. It was crazy, unbelievable. Um. I guess I was just mad because I thought like, oh, Taibi's reaching out. Okay, good. We can patch things up. But it was more like, like f three or four exchanges back and forth. I'm like, are you right? Is this a, are you asking me this for a piece you're writing? And it turns out, he, yup. Um, Whoops. And so, I don't know, maybe I'll do a piece. Because you know, there's been things that Taibi has said about this show. Mm that are, I can prove, are inaccurate. So, if, if we're really going to go into like, oh, look at this tweet. It shows so much. That can work both ways. Anyways. Do you have a fifth wind? Are you good? Okay. All right. Somebody, uh, somebody needs to, uh, somebody needs to get me some, some, some sebe day. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right. There was a, a, a tweet on July 18th. Here, let's just go through the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, play this, uh, the tweet. Like, I just put, um, it was on July 23rd, Alex's War will world premiere on the big screen with renowned journalist Glenn Greenwald hosting a live Q&A with Alex Jones and film director Alex Lee Moyer exclusively on Rockfin. I don't think there was a single question asked of the filmmaker. It was sort of weird. Yeah, she's like looking down she's at like her lap the whole time. The whole time. Weird. She looked embarrassed. <laughs> um, and let me tell you something. Again, I have worked in independent film for 15 years. I went to many film festivals with my own film and in other films I, I, I acted in. These interviews are promotional. I will also say this about documentaries. Every time I have seen the subject of a documentary get interviewed at the film festival, it has always made me question the relationship between the subject and the filmmaker. Now, I haven't seen the film, but I'm just telling you that. I remember seeing Barbara Koppel, uh, Barbara Koppel do, uh, do a Q&A after... Um, uh, and, and I don't know if Woody Allen was there or what, but after uh, her uh, Woody Allen documentary, and it was a, it was a total puff piece. I mean, what was that Hillary puff. Clinton documentary that was just on Hulu? I mean, you can think of these things in the same vein when these public figures have the consent to participate or to give their consent, essentially. It's a propaganda offensive for, that they're participating right. in. It's nothing like the of Justin course. Bieber but, documentary where, like, but, they, they bring them on tour. It's the same, same stuff. But and with I, that said... That's my opinion, okay? With that said, Not yours. I haven't seen the film. It could be a hard-hitting film that really takes uh, sure. um, Alex Jones to task. But here's the thing. I don't care about Alex Jones the person. I, I, I don't care. I judge Alex Jones upon what he has put out into the world in his profession. And it's been garbage. It's been garbage. 
And every time he has mentioned anything that is even remotely legitimate, like skepticism of CIA, NSA, the national security state, whatever it is that you want to you want to boast about what he's done over his 20 some odd career year career more. Understand this, that the best way to make people seem like lunatics for criticizing the CIA or the FBI or the national security state is to mix it in with stuff about one world governments. Obama's a Muslim and weather machines and David Ike's and lizard people. And, the, and Jones has done all of this, all of it. So understand, that's why I say, if Jones didn't exist, the CIA would invent him. So this tweet goes up, show the tweet, show the original tweet that I commented on and seen, uh, and that's a wrap. Well, that's the tweet right there, yeah. Put that tweet up. Put that tweet up. I don't need to see mine. Let's just do that one. I just put and seen on it. And that is a wrap because that is a tweet, not about the movie. That is a tweet about the live Q&A with Glenn Greenwald. And my comment at that time was, that's the end of Greenwald's journey. He's gotten to his arrival destination. Now, I still think there may be a little bit more to come. But, uh, and so Taibi uh, contacted me about that tweet. Um, I didn't realize at first it was for a piece he was writing. Uh, questioning, like, uh, you haven't even heard the, uh, you haven't even heard the. Uh, Seen the documentary. Oh, here, I'll read it. I'll read it right now. Uh, here it is. Sam, regarding your tweet, did you see the movie, question mark? Do you know whether it's flattering or unflattering or both? Is a movie about Alex Jones automatically illegitimate to watch? Now, let's be clear. I don't think that at all. To watch. And, or is it that appealing on, appearing on stage with Jones is automatically illegitimate? It's not appearing on stage with Alex Jones. I once did a um, uh, Ari Melber show, and I came on, I didn't know who the other guests are, and on the TV, one of the other panelists was Bill Crystal. And unless I have an opportunity to argue with Bill Crystal, I've already told those people, like, that doesn't happen again. I'll go on with Bill Crystal if I get to argue with him. I'll go on with any of those Republicans if I get to argue with them. So it's not appearing on the same stage. It is doing a promotional Q&A. But still, to be fair, and I thought I was by saying and seen, that is a wrap. I wasn't really making a hard-hitting analysis of this Q&A because it hadn't happened yet. How would you do a story on Alex Jones' phenomenon without talking to him as or, or his followers? If I wanted to do a story on Alex Jones' phenomenon and I felt like I needed to interview him, guess what I wouldn't do? I wouldn't make it a public interview because I'm doing it for a, write, a piece I'm writing. And I wouldn't do it on the, on the back end of a movie that Alex Jones obviously feels it's important to promote or he wouldn't be there. Because yes, people give permission to a documentary and then decide, this, I didn't like the way this was cut. I'm not going to promote this. The context is a press junket. This it's is a not, press. It's a press junket. It's for all intents and purposes. It's a live press junket. And so all of these questions by Taibbi is a joke. And at, at first I thought like, oh, is this like Matt reaching out to me because we haven't talked in many years? And I said, I don't care about the movie, and nor have I commented on it. I watched, uh, but I did watch Glenn's interview. And I asked Taibbi if he had any thoughts about Glenn's interview, which apparently he hasn't th watched mm. or did not want to share with me. At that point, I realized, like, oh, wait a second. Is this for, are you asking me this question for the first time in three years, reaching out to me to write a story with my tweet as the centerpiece of your talking about how the coastal elites 
Well, of course. Doing the hard work. And just as a thought experiment, say you were conducting an interview with Rachel Maddow and there was a documentary that had been done about her and she was intimately involved in it. Oh my what God. do you think Glenn Greenwald's response would be to that? What do you think Matt Taibbi's response would be to that? And you are not a self-professed journalist who has won Pulitzer Prizes for your reporting, investigative reporting, and which Sam is would why I ask her what Gle- and this is Glenn's, you know, he hinges his identity on this and his credibility on this is that he's going to ask hard hitting questions because he's a journalist. So in that hypothetical situation, that would be even better than the one that were set up here. Oh, that was set up. Here. Absolutely. And uh, but here's the thing. I watched the interview, the entire interview. And this is what this is what I expected that Glenn's going to go easy on him, but he's going to ask one or two hard questions so that he can say, I did it to ask those one or two hard questions. Because make, make no doubt, this benefits Alex Jones. Right as we speak, a jury is beginning to deliberate on how many millions of dollars they're going to give to the victims of his defamation. There's no one out there to sue him for, you know, telling his followers that there's a weather machine out there and that Obama's a Muslim and that uh, on and on and on, the decades of disinformation that he's put out. There's nobody, nobody to sue him for that at this point. So I watched the interview and it was worse than I thought because those two questions, they never ever came. What do we have? Two? Do we have two uh, clips? Yeah, we've got two clips. They sort of lead right into each other. The first clip is uh, after Alex is talking about Jan Six being sort of like a uh, uh, Fed uh, uh, aggravated um, inside job that they nearly that could have been catastrophic. Uh, then Glenn asks him about the uh, election lies that led. Well, Glenn doesn't frame that the about the claims of election fraud that led up to January sixth. And and let's be clear, I don't know if there was more than. I think he asked about 10 questions. Never followed up, incidentally. No, it was always like, that reminds me of something that happened to me with elite media. And almost every question was prefaced with his classic liberal Dems are so uh, ridiculous, blah, blah, blah stuff, which of course, but this is embarrassing. Let me just put it this way. If Glenn Greenwald was not paid for this, I'm embarrassed for him. (laughs) Go ahead. Complex issue, but if, all, if I had it all to, to do again, I would have just stepped back and said, Biden, sink the ship and see what happens. Pause it for a man- Pause it. I'm sorry. Now, he, to be clear here, he's talking about January 6th. He is regretting his involvement in January 6th, not because people died, not because it was assault on a Capitol, because strategically it was not effective. Go ahead. And I'm not a revolutionary leader in like war. I'm not trying to lead troops. I don't have some weird thing in my head like I need to be a military GI Joe guy. And but when you get a million people in DC, it doesn't matter. Even if they're being manipulated, you steal your responsibility. So I have a lot of guilt over January 6th uh, because it could have gone really bad if the federal provocateurs had, had their way. If they would have, the Q people would have actually kidnapped Mike Pence and Pelosi and put them in handcuffs. Woo, we'd be martial law right now because that would have been us capturing the capital that would have been the country going down the tubes so we came in january 6th and closing was a dud it was meant to provocateur us into a violent event that was meant to get out of control thank god it failed and so i feel like i've been brought to the edge of death and so january 6th to me is very serious let me ask you about the underlying pause cause it incidentally. Of, uh, pause it incidentally alex jones attributes more to January 6th, importance and danger, et cetera, et cetera, than Glenn Greenwald ever has. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's so just be clear. The he risk says, of the I, QAnon there. Quote, I have a lot of guilt over January 6th. So, I mean, he's been self-reflective about it more than we can say for and, others. And he peppers in the, it was the Fed conspiracy thing, right. but he also he also uh, admits that QAnon folks could have been dangerous during now, this. Now, if Alex Jones ass- asserts that it's a federal conspiracy, let's say I had done this. Something's a conspiracy. What would Glenn Greenwald, j- elite journalist, what would he respond with? Russia Gate. Any, no, no. Do you have any evidence of that? Can you substantiate mm. that claim? Mm. But no, it's not. He wants to get inside the motivation of Alex. Like, what, like what is the psychology? Just go back a little bit so we can hear this. This question is just unbelievable. 
failed. And so I feel like I've been brought to the edge of death. And so January 6th to me is very serious. Let me ask you about the underlying cause of, of January 6th, which nominally at least was the idea that there had been widespread fraud in the 2020 election, that Donald Trump actually won these states like Arizona, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and others, and that because of fraud, they had swung the rightful victor, which is Donald Trump, to Joe Biden. There is a point in the film where you were talking about Sandy Hook, and I thought something he said was very poignant, which is anyone can kind of get carried away in their ideology where you start almost becoming so anti-establishment. I definitely feel this myself sometimes that you kind of want to cast out on the what the establishment is saying simply because they lie so often that you want to kind of make the point that these are untrustworthy institutions independent of the argument you're making. In this case where you were saying there was widespread fraud, did you actually conduct what you feel like is kind of a meticulous a forensic analysis of the voting patterns and conclude that there was fraud in these states sufficient to have swung the election or was this kind of an ethos like a way of saying that the establishment was so against Trump from the beginning in illegitimate ways that I'm going to kind of endorse this cause not because it's necessarily true in its particulars but more as kind of a thematic way of protesting pause it right pause it pause it pause it pause it pause it <laughs> let me just tell you what Glenn just did there this is how pathetic this is oh jeez <laughs> Did you, when you were talking about January 6th, which was nominally, supposedly about a stolen election, did you do some deep research to see if this was true? Or was it really, is this the reason why you did it? Because you were responding to the unjust way in which Donald Trump was treated and that this ethos created a mistrust. And in fact, this mistrust was so valid and legitimate that it excused the excesses of what brought about January 6th. Like, Greenwald's literally feeding him <laughs> the best answer that Alex Jones could have if Alex Jones wanted to escape any type of responsibility and to put blame this on the greater liberal media establishment that that did such harm as as trump said the other day and is uh you know that he's the most persecuted man in america it's indistinguishable from if alex jones is going to a therapist and the therapist was like your feelings are valid that's basically no, what glenn is no, saying it's not just your feelings are valid here's an idea alternative of your feelings could be yeah, right. that's valid <laughs> well watch what what alex jones does here Go back. Uh, uh, yes both glenn <laughs> That I'm going to kind of endorse this cause, not because it's necessarily true in its particulars, but more as kind of a thematic way of protesting. Uh, no, I mean, I'll be honest, which is the, which the establishment doesn't do. I'll be honest. It was a yeah, no, it was a pre-baked deal that obviously Biden's not going to get more votes than Trump. And, the, and we saw all the weird, <laughs> you know, anomalies and like Democrats blocking the windows and people like feeding machines full of things. And so we mm. saw some evidence. And, but we we were expecting yeah. it and and so yeah you can say it's kind of a foregone conclusion and we all look through rose colored darklies but i think it's kind of 50 50 and then now in hindsight with 2000 mules all this stuff has come out i mean i think that obviously bullshit. i don't think biden got more votes than trump but in a sick way it's better that biden's in so we now get to see what the establishment's really about but but yeah i uh i mean we expect election fraud right away and so kind of when you're a hammer everything's a nail i mean i think we distorted our views obviously and they'll say jones admitted he distorted views. Now, there was evidence of the fraud, and it got covered up and got suppressed. But I'm not going to lie and say we didn't, I didn't distort my views in hindsight to what was happening. Yeah, you know, I think one of the, the things I think about a lot is. All right, pause it now. Okay, yeah, 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 you know. Just be clear what just went down. <laughs> Glenn said, here's, here's uh, two options that you can answer this question about why you uh, were, were, you know, motivating January 6th. One is because you did deep dive into the uh, election file. You found it was really fraudulent or thought it was. And the other is that you, the people you represent have been so mistreated <laughs> and Donald Trump has been so mistreated that there was a general sense of like, we're not going to uh, uh, we're not going to we're not going to trust the establishment. And therefore, this is a reaction to a much larger yeah. poor, a palette of of 
of of uh, aggrievement than just this one thing. Heads, and, you were uh, had evidence. Tails, you were righteous. And and, and you were righteous. <laughs> yeah. And that, no, but Glenn wanted him to say the second one because that's the defensible right. one, at least in the context of Glenn's whole thesis, which is these people are feeling so. It's it's obvious you're going to get these type of eruptions, not because of the specific nominal reason of a stolen election, but rather because of the constant disdain that the liberal media elites heap on these people. And Joan says, ah, oh, no, actually, no, no. We knew it was gonna be stolen from the beginning. And that may have made it so that, you know, I've seen some uh, you know, documentaries since then, uh, two meals. And uh, so it's clear that it was gonna be stolen. We knew that from the beginning. So I'm not gonna lie. No, we knew it was gonna be stolen from the beginning and that, uh, so yeah. But when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. And so we just went on it. So no, why not no, both? And why not both? Up in other words, dose. you gave me two options. I'm gonna take them both. In other words, I'm more or less a uh, QAnon guy, but I activate that and hyperize it as if I'm like a like a character in a show to monetize it. And you know, uh, and then in retrospect, I should have just known like, uh, let Biden win. And, uh, and then, you know, business will be uh, still booming, so. And you know, Rose, Rose color darkly is that yeah. we all make mistakes. Right, and then, and so Glenn's follow up is, you know, let's talk about something that's even this a little is, bit soft. This is a Pulitzer follow up. Yes, here we go, here. here we go. Here's the big one, here's the big one. Do you ask him about Sandy Hook? Well, of course you're going to. Oh, that's, no, no, keep oh wait, oh wait, no, keep going. That's, okay, a, that's okay. Sandy Hook's a little bit later, but this is to that, yeah. I didn't distort my views in hindsight to what was happening. Yeah, you know, I think one of the, the things I think about a lot is the established media, its function is to spread disinformation. They lie constantly in ways far worse than what, what you just kind of... Exactly, I have been on wrong because I don't want to be a liar like Tim. I think lying about an election is a pretty severe form of lying. Like, I know, like, Iraq was bad, and I think the, like, New York Times and everyone who is uh, complicit in that, we should always rake them over the coals. But also, lying about who won an election and whether you can trust ballot boxes, that's a huge uh, that's pretty fun civilizational to yeah. important lie. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a pretty serious lie. On purpose, like Russiagate. Russiagate being the, I mean, the, for, you know, calling you a conspiracy theorist is so hilarious given that for four years, the leading institutions of our country were insisting that the Kremlin had seized the levers of power in the United States by virtue of sexual blackmail over Donald Trump, the sort of, you know, kind of like Robert Ludlum novel from the Cold War that would get rejected for being too stupid and banal. That was like the leading narrative of our. Yeah, we can cut this so one here, but you get the point of Glenn's follow-up. Well, yeah, Glenn's follow-up is calling you a conspiracy theorist because you talk about conspiracies constantly that are completely bunk doesn't make sense since there were other people who were uh, making up things about uh, Donald Trump. Calling him a conspiracy theorist is so hilarious. He said the government, as you say, controls the weather, has weather weapons. He said Robert Mueller was a pedophile. He and a demon. He said Sandy Hook was staged. He, stole the, he said he the election said, was stolen. He said Hillary Clinton was running a pedophilic sex uh, ring in a pizza parlor. But like right in front of Glenn just a minute earlier, he said, we saw all the stuff with them putting the, the block in the windows. Right. and yeah. Right. All the stuff that has been completely disproven by court case after court case after court case. Said Muslims right. celebrated when the 9-11 when the happened in New Jersey, which uh, Trump later stole. Um, all right. So this is the... So then I'm watching this and I'm thinking, okay, he's got to have a one question that is going to redeem this uh, interview. Like, I think it's perfectly legitimate to do 35 minutes of puff stuff and then ask one question if that's what your agenda is. But alas, no. Before, I, I want to ask you a little bit about Sandy Hook. I know the expectation is I'm supposed to come here and bash you over the head about Sandy Go ahead. I deserve it. No, I have no interest in doing that. I don't give a shit what the expectations are. It would bore me if I tried. You've talked about it extensively uh, for people who are interested in it. You've been deposed about it. You've talked for hours about it. People interested in the particulars can go watch that if they want. I'm not going to jump through hoops in order sure. to like, appease Pause people angry that I'm here. Okay, so there it is. It is the, the people who expect me to do my job. <laughs> Screw them. You know what he doesn't mention is that you've been convicted 
of defaming them. You caused people to attack the parents of people who lost their children. You created almost the genre of crisis actors when it comes to these shootings. I mean, go ahead, go ahead, I deserve it. Yeah, I deserve He's, it. And then I don't do it, and then he doesn't do it. Well, you, but I'm not going to because Nuts. Alex4372 um, on uh, Twitter says that I'm a jerk if I don't do it, so I'm not going to. I'm here. I do, though, want to ask you about a question that I'm actually interested in myself, which is, you know, you have just you just said that that you have made mistakes. Obviously, one of those is the stuff you said about Sandy Hook. We watched you in the film come very clean about the fact that you made statements that turned out to be untrue. You've obviously spent they a lot of time of it wasn't time. All it's fake. Like the soulful Alex Jones we got to see in the last part of the the film. Mm. What is it that you think caused you to do that? Um, I mean, you you pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Now, what does it cause you to do that? That's a, I mean, it's not hard hitting question it's saying like can you please uh, rationalize this but it's not enough for glenn yeah glenn's now going to give a suggestion again as to what could be a good answer and the reason that alex jones is even owning up to this is because he was taken to court and no, that's no, no. why he has to and today this happened uh, five or six days ago today they're in court determining what the damages are going to be he's already been convicted of defamation what the damages are going to be. So maybe reasons. him coming out publicly in a movie premiere right before this defamation uh, damages suit is going to be settled and not owning it would be bad for him. And you would think that as a journalist, you might want to press him on that, especially with that hanging over his head. But regardless. I, you know, and I just I identify with it myself that when, you know, people who lie for a living are telling you that you're a liar, when people who are, are whose job it is to spread this information are accusing you of doing that, you kind of want to dig in a little bit and, and not give an inch to people who you know aren't criticizing you in good faith. But what is it about kind of how social pause media it, works? Pause about it, pause how it. We got to go back again. Glenn would now has premised that the people who are criticizing him about Sandy Hook were not doing so in good faith. Or is he talking about Glenn? It's just, this is so twisted. Like, oh, watching it again, it's just so twisted. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's simultaneously Glenn, like, kind of interviewing himself, and then also Glenn doing more less journalism and more pro bono defense work for exactly. Alex Jones. Exactly. Continue. His job it is to spread this information or accusing you of doing that, you kind of want to dig in a little bit and, and not give an inch to people who you know aren't criticizing you in good faith. But what is it about kind of how social media works, about how kind of groups function? Have you thought about some of the psychological and cultural dynamics that, that led you to, to make some of those mistakes in Sandy Hook? Well, sure. Think of this like a thousand page book. In Sandy Hook in my life, it's like a quarter page. And, and, and I'm not putting down the kids that died or any of that stuff. It's just like the I, I, I used to on the air go with I would take calls. It used to be a call different show. It still is, but like ten years ago it was like almost all calls for like four hours a day. So the callers all call in and say, We don't believe this, look at this. So like, well let's look at this, let's look at that. And they kind of take pieces of that out of context. And so here's a way to describe it. Fast forward to Jesse Smollett. I do a Sunday show and I guess it was a Saturday night or wherever it was. Maybe it was a Monday show, I forget, but they say he's at 2.30 in the morning and guys dump bleach on him and put a noose over his head and say it's MAGA country. And I'd already been sued for Sandy Hook and I said, I don't care if I get sued, this doesn't sound real. <laughs> and of course it wasn't real. Or or or, or that, that NASCAR rider, driver, Bubba whatever, Bubba Wallace, they had nooses hanging in my thing. It's like, like you just know that's BS. So a lot of it is just, I'm a talk show host. So I don't go, I'm journalistic and I have the witnesses and I have the proof and, you know, uh, uh, Jesse Smollett's full of crap. But I still went on air and I said, the day after it happened, I said, Jesse Smollett's full of crap. There's not dudes at 23 and below zero running around at 2.30 in the morning dumping bleach on black people. Get your fast kicked. I mean, like, I mean, you go attack black people building out of Chicago, you're looking to die. I mean, like, <laughs> run around 2.30 in the morning, that ain't going on. So, so to me, it's kind of like the internet doesn't buy anything it's told anymore because they've been lied to so much. I mean, take, take, take Uvalde. I didn't say anything about Uvalde. The head of state police said, everything we've been told to lie, we don't know what happened. 
I mean, project what you want on lies and incompetence and a 77 minute stand down. The police are putting hand sanitizer. So, I'm, Glenn, I'm sorry it's a long answer. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, well, what, what do you think led you into these kind of errors that you've been describing? I think, it, you know, it led, <laughs> keep going. With great question. It, it, it was just being on air four or five hours a day. You're very cavalier. And so, you, you're not putting a journalistic filter on cavalier. things. When I write an article, I would do that. Or I make a film, I was like getting every piece together. Those were pretty good films. You watch my films from 20 years ago, they're pretty accurate. But you're on air cavalier and like drinking vodka and smoking cigarettes and like, you know, doing whatever. And you're like, you're like, yeah, yeah, I hear it's a bunch of fake BS, man. And like, you're sued for it. Oh, God. So, so, and, and then once I got into that process, it, it, you know, once they came after me for it, once Hillary made a big issue out of it, it was a you know, totally different ball game. And, and then and, and what, 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 what makes me mad is they misrepresented what I said and what I did. And then in the trials they have coming up starting next week, they defaulted me and the judge in Texas issued orders. Forget Alex Jones. Let's say I'm Hitler. The order says, cannot mention the First Amendment. It's in the order. Cannot say you're innocent. It cannot say it's a show trial. It's in an order. So... I'm probably going to probably boycott the trial or something because that's not a trial where if I was a guy caught again with 20 dead bodies in my basement, I could get up. They're like, Mr. Well, Cosby, I, I just want to make it clear. This is incomprehensible. I said that, uh, well, that I, I, I mean, he's complaining about the process yeah. here, but let's be clear. And, and I said he was convicted of defamation. He's liable for defamate, defamation. It is a civil trial. You don't compare the protections that are offered you in a in a criminal trial with that in a civil trial. Because it is not you're not being criminally prosecuted. The standard of, of evidence and proof is lower in a civil trial. He's not being convicted. That's a that would be a criminal offense. And I, I misspoke there. But he has been found guilty of defamation. Liable for defamation. I, we don't need to hear him ramble on because the whole point was yeah. the questions that Glenn Greenwald did, did not ask. We did miss the part where he does uh, talk about how handsome Alex Jones is. That literally was a part of it. I mean, like when that came up at the beginning, I was like, whatever. That's a good, you know, like if you're going to go at. Him, if you're buttering them up. If you're going to go at somebody, you butter them up up front. Absolutely. Without a doubt. But this was more like, I'm going to butter you up. And then I'm going to serve you some croissants. And add some and cinnamon. I hope you eat them. <laughs> oh, wait, you don't like them? I mean, that was just... And, and, and I'm telling you, folks, there's, there is nothing more challenging than that. We just watched the, 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 the most of it. That is, like, honestly, I have seen TV press junkets. I've been on TV press junkets where actors get asked questions by entertainment reporters that are far more uncomfortable than what Glenn offered there. I mean, that was just... And, and, that was and really, a friendly chat among friends. The only thing, the, the, the issue here for me is, A, I, I think it's quite possible I gave Glenn Greenwald his first national mass media appearance on uh, Air America Radio. I had Glenn on many, many, many times on this show. Um, the guy, uh, I think he deserved his Pulitzer. He's done some good journalism in the past. He has decided to go a different route. I don't know if that's just a function of, of money or ego or resent or his ideology, I imagine. In decisions like this, all the things go in it. Certainly all those things go into my decision to show up at work every day. But the claim that he is some great journalist, and put up, put up those tweets. So other people were critiquing his appearance there. And this is what his response was. Look at it. The reason so many governments threaten Sam Cedar with prosecution or try to imprison him and put him on blacklist, but never do that to me, is because he's an incredibly courageous and fearless enemy of establishment power. It's unfair to hold the rest of us to that standard. I, I, I repeat this only because it only got eight likes. And so I want people to understand what he's out there doing. You debased yourself 
by promoting Alex Jones, by giving him, lending him some of your cachet as a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who governments have put on blacklists and uh, governments have, you know, uh, threatened, et cetera, et cetera. You've used all that to promote Alex Jones and then to just, you've leveraged it to say that that's not happened to me. Dude, I'm sitting right here because I was chewing steak on sex in the city and spit it out. That's why I'm here. You're the one who has the credibility. And you, you just flushed it. And as far as this, where he says, had I gone to Austin instead to interview David Frum, put this up. Nicole Wallace, John Brennan, because he got in it with people for a long time. I guess he was a little bit uh, embarrassed. Sensitive. Had I gone to uh, instead uh, to interview David Frum, Nicole Wallace, John Brennan, Bill Crystal, Liz Cheney, or any other neocon or security state goon with blood on their hands from starting wars, you wouldn't have uttered a peep. Many of them and Sam Cedar shared a common employer. I'll make this clear. I think I've done videos attacking or segments attacking every one of them. I don't know, maybe Nicole Wall. I'm sure I've said it offhand, but certainly no, every one of them. <laughs> I've done it on their network. Last year, this show was licensed for Peacock. It wasn't MSNBC, but it was the same employers. And we aired those on that network. This year, I have not made more than $900 from that employer. The idea that we shared a common employer is absurd. First off, I was a contractor. I was not an employee ever in my and life. And he's familiar with those and he knows. distinctions. He knows. But the idea that that association, when this guy is out there shilling for Blake Masters, shilling for Peter Thiel, I don't know if he has any financial interest in that movie or got paid to be there or what it was or just a free trip or, or whatever. Well, Rockfin did air it. Yeah, Rockfin air, was air all that over the interview, so. I know for a fact he's getting paid a ton of cash from Rockfin, but, if, but whatever. It's not advertising base. Who knows if the, he's under the influence of, of uh, you know, uh, those crypto people? Who knows? I don't know. But this is just pathetic on his part. And I don't know if this will be the final time that we ever talk about him, but his move to the right is almost fully complete. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that when, like, he, he puts these tweets up and they get no response. Even his own people now yeah, understand what's th going on. That's been a change is you used to get a lot of Glenn defenders and they're drying up now and increasingly like less um, uh, interesting to argue with. And that's what the Twitter activity is there for, though, because since the, the, the defenders have kind of evaporated and maybe just conservatives have gone to watch him on Rockfin or whatever other platform he's on, you still need Twitter and fights on that platform to bring people over to that. Mm. And one thing I'll say just before we wrap this is just for somebody who makes an actually accurate point about how, you know, there has been Judith Miller, there have been people like that. Disinformation, if you want to use that term, has come from legacy media outlets, mainstream media outlets. That point completely dissolves, completely collapses on itself when you do something like this. Of course. It is, it is a completely bankrupt characterization from your end, from Glenn's end, to doing something like this. I, it is not a reliable viewpoint anymore coming from someone who would do this with Alex Jones. The, the way to combat lies in the media is to promote one of the biggest liars in one of the outlets who basically said his process was to drink vodka, smoke cigarettes, take other things, and then just help for three or four hours. And guess what? I can understand the concept of doing three or four hours a day of radio. Yeah, and when you did, were doing that, did you ever call uh, parents of kids that were slain in a mass shooting? Did you call them? You know, things get carried away. Things get carried away, and I'm on the radio for three hours, and I decide to, uh, to pretend like this shooting was completely made up. Must have eaten a big bowl of chili. Oh. 
It's funny because uh, you mentioned David Icke or David Icke. I can't remember what is it's pronounced as, but Alex Jones says of Ike that he's a turd in the punch bowl, meaning that uh, Ike is coming in and making all of his theories about the NSA and Obama being a Muslim look silly because David Icke's so far out there. But Alex Jones is exactly that. And, and to and promote him as like a source on the NSA or Iraq war or whatever is leading people into like, I mean, it's the worst sort of bum steer. It, you're leading people into delusion. Absolutely. The idea that there aren't uh, people who know what they're talking about in their critique of the NSA and the national security state and that you would you would credit Alex Jones with this stuff as if he did a lick of that of 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 reporting whatsoever. Um, this is funny. Uh, Frank Frank Bum uh, has a bunch of tweet, old tweets from Greenwald. If you want to pull up some of these. Hmm. A very mainstream writer, page 88, Wired Slayton, explicitly suggests Bernie 2016 was a Kremlin option and ponders if he was wittingly helping Putin. This is, quote, Alex Jones-level conspiracy derangement. Ah. That was uh, one tweet. Let's, Let's read try the next one. Um, Glenn Greenwald responding to Phil Mattingly saying Rubio to reporters on the Alex Jones interaction v. Ted Barrett. And I know you've got to cover them, but you give these guys way too much attention. We're making crazy people superstars, so we're going to get crazier with people. This is, to be fair, four years ago. <laughs> uh, Glenn Greenwald says he's not wrong about Alex Jones, but Marco Rubio spent weeks now agitating for U.S. military invasion of Venezuela, so maybe he's not a great moral authority on who is and what is crazy. So, yes, Alex Jones is crazy, and crazy people shouldn't decide, um, give us an assessment on, on real things, because they're crazy too. They might poison the well. Um, Greenwald's asking, uh, I'm not clear who, in 2017, would you be okay if the New York Times published an op-ed from InfoWars about how Obama was born in Kenya and U.S. did 9-11? Mm. Whoops. InfoWars, InfoWars, InfoWars. Oh, yeah, Alex Jones, I think. Alex Jones is out. InfoWars level junk. So at another time, this is effing lunacy, conspiratorial madness of the worst kind, but it's delivered by a serious Obama official and respected mainstream newscaster, so it's all fine. This is InfoWars level junk. Huh. That is weird. So strange. Odd. Now, here's the story they're going to tell that Glenn is going to tell and that Taibbi is going to write a story to justify Glenn's appearance. It's not about Alex Jones. It's about the people who follow Alex Jones. We want to understand them. Okay. You want to understand the people who follow Alex, Alex Jones and who they like their entertainment and their news completely digestible and assuring them that there's some type of secret forces out there that they cannot compete with. Alex Jones completely disempowers people within the political realm. His fandom is no more relevant than, I don't know, any other entertainers. It's just that this is what they're, this is what they feeds their entertainment. There is no evidence whatsoever that these people were like activists and wanted to get involved, you know, were, were involved in politics. But no, it is a way for people like any other escapism to deal with questions that they can't deal with, to uh, express their frustration. Just like, I don't know, heavy metal music or not heavy metal music or video games or whatever. And if you want to examine the, the, the viewership, you don't, you don't need to interview Alex Jones. You don't need to know why he's doing this. And in fact, Glenn's lame attempt to fit his thesis in there that... Alex is like his viewers. He's just frustrated with being lied to all the time. And therefore, it's more of an ethos that he's pursuing. And he's using specific nominal things to pursue that ethos. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. And... It was rejected Glenn, by Alex. <laughs> and Glenn, ignoring his role in this process, is very much like the establishment media that he uh, rags on ignoring their role in creating some type of narrative. That's what Glenn's doing here. 
And Taibbi is just mopping up. He's just like basically uh, covering the flanks. Yep. Opening up the field. It's disgusting. It's pathetic. It's sad. And transparent. And uh, pretty transparent. But at the very least, I think Glenn will get some, maybe some, uh, he'll get some audience from uh, the... I think Glenn should go talk to David Icke and how he's uh, suppressed by Alex Jones. I mean, Icke has an audience. Yeah. Why, why aren't you trying to understand those people? Because you, you want to set, gatekeep them out of You know media. who else has an audience? Hillary Clinton. Why don't you go do a softball interview with Hillary Clinton to find out what makes her tick? What makes you tick? Because I'm curious as to why 130 million people, whatever it was, 120 million people voted for you. What makes you tick? Entertainment reporter. All right. Sorry. Sorry about that. (laughs) That went on a little longer than I had anticipated. It is all good.